and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where deceit and dishonesty is applauded and rewarded. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a woman with a thing for athletic men and sporting talent. Look out, David, it's sports presenter Gabby Logan. <laughs> and uh, an actor and writer who created the series Outnumbered, a sitcom about living with unruly juveniles. So he'll be right at home tonight. It's Andy <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> and uh, over on Lee Mack's team tonight, she's been in countless fights, been kidnapped by her own husband and had an affair with her GP. And that was just on the way here tonight. All the way from Albert Square, EastEnders' Diane Parrish. <laughs> And the doctor who pokes and prods the patients on his TV show, Embarrassing Bodies. Forgive me if I don't shake hands. It's Dr Christian Jessen! <laughs> and so we begin with uh, round one, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Now, Gabby, you're first up tonight. Off you go. When I want to remember something late at night, instead of writing it down, I just grab an object from my bedside table and throw it across the room. <laughs> there we are, Lee. What do you think? So, what's the theory behind that? Well, I, I think that if I throw it in the morning, I'll remember what it was that I was trying to remember. Ah, so, for example, if you were lying in bed, and you were thinking, I must remember tomorrow to pick up the pillow. You'd get the pillow, you'd throw it... <laughs> <laughs> Have you experimented with slightly easier techniques of remembering stuff, like pen and paper, maybe? <laughs> it is quite odd to throw things, but actually, in a way, having a pen and paper next to your bed, <laughs> I would say is odder. I'd be more freaked out like it was some sort of marking system. <laughs> There's pen and paper next to the beds in hotels. <laughs> <laughs> it's in case people want to mark each other. <laughs> it's not just for countdown, David. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you did it? Do you remember? No, I, was, I was just. <laughs> <laughs> An odd moment, that was wasn't it? <laughs> First of all, we're trying to work out which of the two of you what she's looking at. <laughs> if, if indeed was it both. What, what, what happened there is I considered saying something <laughs> and then stopped myself. I thought before anyone had noticed I'd considered and saying I, something. And I, for comedic right, effect, but, but... pretended that we were sleeping together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Trust me, we knew it was for comedic effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the only reason anyone ever does sleep with me. <laughs> time that I did it uh, was to remember, um, I think I hadn't done my kids' school lunchboxes, so it was to remember to do their lunchboxes. Right. Does it have to be something related? So if it's to remember to book a taxi, do you throw a model taxi <laughs> onto the floor? Is it something yeah. that will... There, will there be a clue? Will the clue be there <laughs> as we go the through... The clue is when I... <laughs> I'm doing David Frost. <laughs> Somehow, when I trip over them in the morning, it just immediately triggers. So, Lee, what's it going to be? I think it's a 50-50 one, this. Yeah. Oh, 50 no. 50. No. Sorry. <laughs> what, would your, what, what would your percentage balance be? Uh, I think 100% uh, it's a lie. That's a big call. <laughs> Which way are you leaning, Christian? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, please, I must, this be, that. <laughs> must this be a festival of smut? <laughs> I suspect it's probably true. I think I'm going to lean more towards Christian and say that that is true. You're saying true. OK, Gabby, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, whenever Gabby wants to remember something late at night, she grabs an object from her bedside table and she throws it across the room. <laughs> Andy, you're next. I used to write and hand in homework for an imaginary classmate. <laughs> so, you, you used to write... You used to do homework for an imaginary classmate and hand it in to the teacher? Yeah. For a, for a pupil that he didn't have cos they were imaginary? That's right. It was yeah. a collective 
effort. Mm. Um, Who was the group of collectives? It was the class. Are it they was... real friends, the class, or are they...? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with names and everything. Real Did he people. have a name? What was his name? He must have had a name, but I can't remember what the name was. One of our class was quite enterprising. This teacher was new. He was a French teacher. He came in uh, and he read the register, and one kid went, Oh, sir, you've missed out... I don't know, call him Fisher for narrative purposes. Yeah. And so this guy wrote in an additional name <laughs> in his register. And then you kept the pretense of this boy up by doing his homework for him and handing it in? Yeah. And <laughs> just out of interest, this teacher, when he handed the homework back, yeah. did he set, come up to you and go, give that to Fisher? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would have been a problem. Right. But he was... He wasn't a great teacher. He couldn't remember my name. Uh. I sat near the window, so he called me Windows. <laughs> he was... was he a French teacher, did you say? Yeah. He didn't call you Windows, then? <laughs> well, he did. He didn't call me Fenetri, he called me Windows. Oh, yeah. that Often would... the very best French teachers speak English as well. Yeah. <laughs> His exams for him, though, you couldn't sit his exam papers. He was off sick was quite a lot. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, at which point did you own up and say, Look, sir, yeah. <laughs> Fisher. Yeah, We've yeah. killed Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing too well. It was yeah. so he never found out, and the school decided to let him go. And then the deputy headmaster, as I recall, came in and ticked us off and said that he wasn't prepared to tolerate fictional children at his school. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what he said. So, Lee Mac, what are you thinking? I can't believe it, cos I just don't think kids would create that much work for themselves. There's a lot of factors that have to be yeah. true here. There yeah. has to be. They all get together and agree to do it. Yeah. We have to believe the teacher never looks up during the register. Yeah. And that well, no Fisher was off a lot. Fisher wasn't there every morning. Fisher was never there, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, can I ask, what's Fisher doing now? <laughs> <laughs> the awful thing is, for a moment there, I you tried to think. I actually... Uh... Time to take a guess, Lee. What are you going to say? Oh, well, trust me, this won't be a guess. I, this, is, this is not true. Not true? If it is, I'm worried for Fisher's welfare. I no, Fisher doesn't exist. I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight thinking about Fisher. There is no Fisher. <laughs> Come on, Lee, what's it going to be? Truth or lie? Nah. Let's put Fisher quietly to rest and say it's a lie. OK, it's a lie. It's a lie. OK, Andy, is it true or is it a lie? There is no Fisher, but it is true. <laughs> To Fisher, then. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> Andy did write and hand in homework for an imaginary classmate. Now, remember, it's funny to have imaginary friends at school, but when you start signing on for them, it's fraud. <laughs> Diane, you're next. <clears throat> when I travel by tube, I like to see how many strangers I can make yawn by yawning myself. <laughs> My record is nine in one carriage. <laughs> <laughs> David Steen. Well, let's see how good you are at, uh, at faking a your... Oh, you... Oh, that's good. Oh, although I have been speaking, so it's not a test. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby's <laughs> gone, Gabby's <laughs> gone. Go, go, I will, yeah. yeah. I'm feeling a bit. <laughs> I, I yawned earlier when you were talking about it earlier. <laughs> that's good, you <laughs> David. Brilliant. This would be great for the trail. <laughs> <laughs> on, coming up on BBC One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your record was, what was it? Nine. Nine, and how long a tube journey was that? I think I started at Cockfosters, and I think I'd ended up at, uh, at Piccadilly Circus. I, yeah, I, just, I remember where I was you going, actually. You yeah. started at Cockfosters? Well, that's the end of the line, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's right, the end of the line. Do, you, it? Well, do you live at Cockfosters? I live thereabouts. The but... reason I'm inquiring yeah. about Cockfosters is that, obviously, it's a well-known station name. Yes. Because mm. it, it, they, all of the Piccadilly line trains going in mm. one direction are, are going to Cockfosters. Mm. 
and I going think therefore, from is, is or, a, or going is from obviously, I'm, I'm aware that you have to. The, the same number of trains have to come from there <laughs> as go to there, otherwise they'll end up stockpiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not denying that many trains emanate from Cockfosters. <laughs> what I'm thinking, though, is that you were thinking, oh, what tube journey could this have been? And the name Cockfosters came into your head because yes. you've seen it so many times no. on the display in the station. It and that's been... making me your think Honor, that you're lying. When I say to people about that end of the line, people just, it's like it's Brigadoon. It's not, it's, it's there. Yeah. People live there, they're a lovely house. No, 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 no. Cockfosters I mean, is honey... a fictional place. <laughs> <laughs> that's where, that's where Fisher lives. <laughs> yeah. When you yawn, Diane, do you, yeah. do you, in order to draw attention to the fact that you're yawning and spread your yawn, you know, more effectively, do you make any noise? Do you just do a... a... Yawning isn't the, the noisiest of... Oh, you uh, can do it. Noisy. Oh, oh, I do, I do. Okay. Oh. I, I do it to... Oh. troubles me about this is that you are, because of EastEnders, yeah. a very recognisable face. Yeah. I would have thought you'd be wanting to... We yawn. ..not draw... T well, I'm not saying yeah. nobody in EastEnders yawns. <laughs> Certainly the viewers, for one. Uh... <laughs> what, what I'm saying is... <laughs> what I'm saying is that uh, someone who is in the public eye often doesn't want to draw attention to themselves. Mm. Yeah, but but interesting enough, of course, if you're yawning, yeah. you look less like yourself. So it could be a way of not drawing attention to yourself by going... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I, Lee, that anyone... I genuinely do that. If no. I'm in a situation, like, where there's... It's not often it happens, but people recognise me. I'll slightly change the shape of my face. I'll sort of go... <laughs> <laughs> Are you Lee Mack? I'll go... No. <laughs> my name's Fisher. <laughs> I live in Cockfosters. <laughs> So what are you going to say, David? It could be true. My instinct is that it's My, not. I, I, I know. I think she was so genuinely enthusiastic when she told it. And if she's mm. only just seen that and it's a lie, then I'm not sure she'd have quite that enthusiasm. Mm. But she is an really? actress. Yeah. So, you know, uh, she is an actress. How very <laughs> So you, you, your instinct is it's true, and your instinct is it isn't. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's not true. That's my instinct. Because I'm two so. to one. I'm. I'm but so I'm we're going to say we think it's a lie. Diane, truth or lie? It's a lie. Oh, well done. Uh, well done. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Uh, Diane does not see how many strangers she can make yawn when she travels by tube. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Kevin. <laughs> So, first of all, Christian, what is Kevin to you? Well, this is Kevin, and he's the surgeon who performed the operation after I swallowed one of the pieces from the board game operation. <laughs> Diane, could you explain how you know Kevin? This was Kevin, but he is such a big EastEnders fan that last year he changed his name by deed poll to Albert Square. <laughs> so, uh, finally, Lee, your relationship with Kevin. This is Kevin. He has worked as my bum double. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. So, uh, Christian's toy surgeon, Diane's real life, Albert Square, or Lee's cheeky friend. Uh, David's team, where do you want to start? Mm, well, yeah, what a barrage of plausibility. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what piece from operation was inside you? It was the wishbone. How old were you when you swallowed the wishbone? About 23. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you swallow it then? then? Well, we were at medical school. <laughs> 
And it was a sort of a dare. I have a friend um, who has... Should we say he's got a tremor? I bet him, I said, you cannot remove all of the pieces from operation without setting off the big red buzzy nose. And if you can, I will swallow a piece of your choice. We've got a picture here just to show you. You had little metal pincers and you had to get the little plastic pieces. There was the Adam's apple, the broken heart. What's the scale of this? It's How about, long is... It's about yay big. So the, the wishbone thing, that's the thing... Time, sort of... Oh, sm small, small. Small. Where, where did it get stuck? It got stuck in my lower esophagus. And the next day I had a sharp pain and I coughed and a little bit of blood sort of puked up a little bit. Um, and I'm I feeling thought, a bit faint now. Can be <laughs> <laughs> OK, a bit of blood. Nothing, it's not going to get worse, is it, than yeah. blood? Well, uh, yeah. It would if I'd left it. So this blood was coming from your stomach? It had just stuck in the side oh, of I'm the esophagus. Yeah, you... but we must have... You don't just... It must have cut <laughs> something, doesn't it? it just, you don't just bring blood up with things being stuck, do you? Oh, so well. well. You have a sphincter at the lower end of your esophagus that stops food coming up yeah. into it. Yeah. yeah. And that sphincter had closed onto this Ooh. spiky little bit of plastic. And that's exactly what happened. So it's all right. So it's, this... just, it's just like... <laughs> it's just like a shoe getting caught in a door. <laughs> and what sort of procedure was it to have it removed? Do they have to hack... Do they have to hack you open, pull the flesh back <laughs> off, take a big pan, a big claw, and the blood is coming out like that, spurting over the face of the surgeon, the there's blood the everywhere. The and they're reaching and pulling out organs and intestines, and then a little creature comes like, and then they get the little piece. Yeah, no, or, no, no, was no, no, it, no. or was it a keyhole? Oh. <laughs> was it just a small camera with a little grabber on the end that went yes. down there and grabbed it and put it out? OK, so uh, do you want to move on to another subject? Yes. yes. Diane. Um, Kevin's name is now Albert Square. Yeah. What, how, <laughs> how did you come to meet, meet... such a weird person? He's a... <laughs> he's, a, he's a fan of the show. We see our fans a lot. They, they, uh, Kevin waits outside. Sorry, Albert waits outside um, Elstree Studios for us to drive in and out, and we stop and we sign autographs. And he, he has cufflinks on. I notice. It's unusual, isn't it, for a fan to kind of <laughs> hang outside Why? the show? Well, no, somebody who stands outside of Elstree. Yes. I wouldn't imagine him to be kind of perfectly decent, a, good people. What are you a, saying? Well, <laughs> Dressed at the moment, I would say, more he like... He's not one of the... He's somebody who has an office job, and those hours don't necessarily collude with filming times. Very clever. Does, that does that? he look like a surgeon to you? Could be a Could surgeon. Could be a surgeon. Yes. Well, Can I just not... say, if we're talking about his looks, he's got a nice pump. <laughs> <laughs> what did he... Did he say what he was hoping to achieve through changing his name? Th this is the thing. I mean, there are people that absolutely love the show and, and, and this is just something... I, I can't explain it for you. You see, I, I would say the, the, the standard response to loving the show yeah. would be to watch the show. That's <laughs> <laughs> you! Yeah. Yeah. Fans do do weird things, yeah. though, don't they? Right, so, Lee, yes? uh, in which of your glamorous film roles was a bum double required? Uh, it wasn't a film role, it was, um, in my situation, comedy, not going out. You may have heard of it. <laughs> don't clap, don't clap. If he has to start it, it doesn't count. <laughs> what is wrong with your bottom? There's nothing wrong with my bottom. Why couldn't they use your yeah. bum? I didn't want to get my bum out on national television. It's fair enough, isn't it? Why Did should it? Kevin have to get his? Sorry, Albert have to get his out. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's <laughs> Kevin. If it's, if it's the bum, it's Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Unless they're all true. <laughs> a brilliant surgeon becomes obsessed with EastEnders. <laughs> what was the scene? The character I play... Yeah. She's very similar to me, actually. Yeah. ..was uh, in an adult movie, and, and at the end I was hung upside down and, and whipped by a, a lady also playing someone in the adult movie industry. Could, could Kevin turn around so we could see his bottom? Yes, Kevin, would, would you turn around, please, Kevin, so we could see your bottom? Thank you. And would you, uh, would you like Lee to, to... Could you, Lee, please stand up and Lee, turn around so we can see your bottom? Lee, would you come and stand? Of course, no problems yes. at all. <laughs> so, can, can you turn around and lift your jacket up? This is like a really strange uh, <laughs> police <laughs> line-up, isn't it? <laughs> um, Lee's bottom is about half a size bigger than you Kevin. <laughs> Has this episode gone out, Lee? Or is I it don't know, but if, if, the, if the question that you asked about was getting up doesn't get in, they'll just think I'm having a wee break. You're not having my 
it's all right, David. The undrives are broken, by the way. <laughs> Kevin, you can turn back round now. Thank you very much. So, what are you thinking? I think he's called Albert Square. Do you? <laughs> you think it's Christian, I, don't you? I did think it was Christian. I'm between oh. Christian and Lee. But the bet is odd. Mm. I'll swallow one of these bits of plastic. Oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure I believe that. Well, the thing is, there's no massive logical problem with any no. of those. They're all stories all that sort stories, of yeah. hold water, but they also are unusual. Mm. How entertaining for the nation. <laughs> 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 it could be any of them. Could be any of them. <laughs> I think when you don't know, you should pick the middle one. <laughs> Lee. So you're saying it's Lee? Yeah, OK. So, Kevin, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Kevin, and I did indeed play Lee's bottom double <laughs> in Not Going Out. Yes, uh, Kevin was Lee's bum double, and, excitingly, We've got a picture. <laughs> Look at that. That is... You the... didn't mention the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Peter. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. And we start with... <clears throat> Lee. I shaved off a beard I had been growing for weeks because I didn't want David to think I was copying him. <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> on the, the team with two beards. Yeah. How long ago was this? About two months ago. What was it that, that alerted you to the fact that I had grown a beard? Well, I looked at you and you had a beard. <laughs> Are you all right? Are you having a breakdown? Were you ever together in the same room with beards? Uh, we did a radio show together and you had a beard and then... I... Uh, he doesn't remember the radio show. Look at his eyes, glazed over. <laughs> Who the hell is this man? I thought he was my driver. <laughs> Don't you recognise me now? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr Davis, sir. Nice beard. <laughs> and then a few... about uh, a couple of months later... Um, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I invited you round to my house for dinner. Yes, I remember. Thank God for yeah. that. <laughs> and um, you I, came... I was too. there as well. Yeah. Rob was there too. <laughs> What a uh, cosy picture we're painting. Yes. <laughs> we were all there, all yeah. together, and we, we sat in this position. I sat yeah. on my table. <laughs> <laughs> David was sat in the other room. Yeah. And at yeah. that point, had you shaved your beard off? I, I, I have a beard quite a lot when I'm mm. at home, when I'm not doing a telly show. Mm. And then I'll get rid of it if I'm doing a telly show. And I said something to my wife like, uh, actually, David's got a beard. He might think, I've grown a beard to copy him. And I just said that as a joke, but it festered. <laughs> it's so as many as... of your jokes do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought, I'll give him a bit of a chance. I'll shave the beard off so he doesn't think and there's no, there's no unsaid tension. So you, you shaved off... it off there and then? I shaved it off about ten minutes before you came round. So what are you going to say, David, truth or lie? It's a very caring... Portrait of himself. Yeah, it is. You, who... you might have thought about that before you came on, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Lee's very worried about your feelings. I mean, it's it's very touching. If I wouldn't you did go that it. far. <laughs> okay, David. I think we think it's true. Yeah. All right, uh, Lee. Truth or lie? It is in fact true. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yes, it's true. Lee did shave off his beard because he didn't want David to think he was copying him. Next. <coughs> it's Christian. Possession. Ah, OK, now look at that thing next to you with a drape over it. First of all, pop that up onto the desk, keeping it hidden under the drape. And then before you unveil the object, would you read the card out, please? <laughs> This is my monkey, Elsie. She watches over me while I sleep. And now please reveal... Elsie. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, David. She could have oh. shaved. <laughs> this is a dead monkey, isn't it? Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, you should know. Oh, no, love. <laughs> 
Elsie, did you... Is Elsie stuffed? No, she's very well trained. <laughs> Disappointed her so badly when she died. What was Poor dying? <laughs> so where did you find mm. Elsie? Did you kill her yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I was flicking through a magazine of interiors, and in the magazine was an advert for a shop that sells fireplaces and monkeys. And on the fireplace <laughs> was an arrangement of objets. Mm including the monkey. So I phoned up the place that sold fireplaces and said, Oi, give us your monkey. <laughs> and they did. What's the story with the tiara? But just out of interest, it's a completely separate subject. Does anyone think that Camilla will ever become queen? What do you think? I just thought I'd throw it open, just have a discussion. What do you think? I didn't mean the monkey with the crown. <laughs> Wait, and that is, that, that's genuinely a stuffed monkey. Can we have a look at it? Shall we go have a look yeah, at it? Yeah, we're allowed to genuinely a stuffed yeah, monkey, yeah. Are, are we allowed to inspect it? Yeah, you can inspect his monkey if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we bring the monkey to you? Yeah, well, yeah look, what are you doing, all three of you? <laughs> you look like an act you'd have had in the you Royal Variety Show in the 1970s. I've been have to stretch my legs at this point. I'll bring it to you. Oh, all right. Come on, I'm just wandering around. Uh, yes, let's have a look at the Go tiara. After. Where's the tiara? Oh, my God, it's terrifying. It's <laughs> real. You know when you're asleep, uh, Christian, and you wake up in the middle of the night and she's looking down on you with that glum expression, doesn't it unsettle or unnerve you? No, I find her very sort of... Monkey. ..soothing. Monkey! <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say, David? Um, is it the truth or is it a lie? I'm going to... Firstly, I'm going to hand yeah. that. I think you should be ensuring that. Not for theft, I wouldn't have said. <laughs> Not for theft. Uh, it looks like he's just won a wildlife BAFTA. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it the truth? Is this oh, is no. this a tall story or is it? You the think truth? it's a lie? I yes. I think we all think. I it's think a lie. it's a lie. I think Christian's a very good actor. So you're saying um, that it is then a lie. A lie. A lie. Okay, a lie. Christian, was it the truth or was it in fact a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> Very well played. Good work. That was hard all to say. Yes, that was all true. Christian does have a stuffed monkey who watches over him while he sleeps. And that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that David's team have won by four points to two. It's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Andy Hamilton. <laughs> yes, Andy Hamilton, a man whose stories are as fake as the smile on his face after four months of filming with those kids on Outnumbered. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>